Hi, welcome to this new video tutorial. Today we are going to talk about uh, Web RTC WebSocket and Angular. So before going into the theories, let me show you what you can expect at the end of this tutorial. So we are going to get something like this. So you can see that here is uh, the front end of our application that we are building. And then, yeah, once you click on this one, so, yeah, you are going to have uh, your camera, uh, your video up here. You can see me here in my local here. And then, yeah, later on in the next series, then we are going to populate all these buttons here. Yeah. So, but... Before we start, we are going to build this interface, this front end, and prepare it for yeah for the next step of our applications. So we stop the call and then go back to yeah explanation. So. And uh, so far, we talk about a uh, web socket and, uh, and Angular, Angular materials. And here we have web RTC. So in order to understand these things, I don't know if you are new to this web RTC or not, but there are some key terms that uh, you should be aware of in order to understand how this uh, platform or library work and uh, so we start with the easiest one that we have done so far it's a uh, web socket so as uh, you know this uh, this uh, web socket is a communication protocol which will provide you a full duplex real-time communications between a client and a server over a single long live connections. So that is the web socket. We stop here, we don't go too much into the details. Then uh, the web RTC, which is the web for real time communications. This is a technology by Google that allow real time communications multimedia real-time communications like with audio, video, data, stuff like Skype, Zoom, Microsoft Team. So it's a bit that, that concept, I'm not saying that those uh, platforms are using 100% web RTC. Uh, we, come, we come back to that later. But this allow you this real-time communications with uh, audio, video, and data sharing between browsers and mobile apps without needing a plugins. And here is very interesting because you don't need any plugins. This web artist is already embedded in major browser by default. And that make it really interesting for building our applications. As you will see, we are going to build everything without really needing to install anything because this one is already uh, available in our browser. Then the next thing is this GUM that uh, we need to know is uh, stand for Get User Media. So this is a uh, web RTC allow you, by using web RTC, you'll be able to pull up. So you'll be able this web RTC gives you the API that allows you to access the audio, the video, the microphones, data from the client. From the client. So you want to build a video call application, we need to access a client camera, audio, and library. So GUM stands for that. And then Last is a peer connections. So 
ons uh, to do this uh, video call, we need two, at least two parties involved. And uh, the connection between them is uh, a peer connections, which allow in uh, web artist jargon to exchange data between two clients. So once we pull up these uh, media that we want, we need to exchange them between the two clients, and then we are going to make use of the peer connections. So we stop here, and uh, in the next part, we are going to talk about the stand server signaling ice candidate offer and answer. Then now, what we need to do now is um, <coughs> what we need to do now is to start our uh, to start building our front end. So. And in order to achieve that, I'm going to make use of uh, VS Code. Uh, here is the VS Code. As our IDE, you feel free to use anything that you want. So any other things might do, IntelliJ, NetBeans, or whatever. So, and then, uh, as usual, we need to come here to the terminals and uh, let's go to the drive. The folder where I do my development is here. And then uh, what we need to do, what we need to do now is is to create our Angular projects. So then we go with ng uh, we go with ng new I will call it uh, web RTC angular Tutorial zero one. Then we tap enter. So we take CSS. Do you want to enable a uh, server side rendering? I say no. And then he will be installing the packages. So I assume that you already had Angular installed in your system. And uh, for me here, the Angular versions that I use is ng versions. Uh, ng should be this no nine okay versions here is angular 18 so this is the one that i'm using so for your informations then and i use also java here jdk is uh, java versions uh java versions here is 17 so i use uh, java 17 and yeah so our project is created and then now we have to do now is to open it uh folder we come here and we scroll here is the project folder we open it and we go to the terminal yeah so then that one is done and then 
our is created here, our project Angular project is here, is created, and then the next thing that we have to do is to add the Angular material UI. So we get ng add at Angular material to our projects. Uh, it will take some time. Then the installation is starting. Uh, will be installed. Would you like to proceed? We say yes. And then we take the blue default. And here we also take the default by typing no. Enable include and enable animations. Yes, we type enter. We are there and then let's save ng saved. Let's uh, save our applications. So it is running here on port uh, 4200. Here is that here. So here is how our default application look like. And then now, let's go and try to customize it so and uh, in order to do this one we'll need to create an additional component and then let's create a new terminal here and then ng generate component and uh, Uh, let's call it panel. We create a folder. Here is our components. So it's created. And if you come here, oh, sorry, it's too much here, and um, we'll delete it, and then create panel components. One will be enough. So we have one folder here called uh, component. Uh, Call a panel. So we have here, and this is our panel components here. Here is our panel components. And then, yeah, once that one is created, uh, we need to, here is we can see here panel works and then we come here to our app components and get rid of everything then let us do some boring stuff right so <clears throat> we start with uh, creating is site nav
container. Then we are going to create a class here that we might call mat site container class. And then uh, we can see that we have some errors here. So uh, before continuing, uh, continuing and yeah, let's continue, no problem. And then let's duplicate this. We double click that. And then inside that, we create the mat toolbar. And we go in custom toolbar. And then inside this toolbar, we are going to write something there. Span and uh, web RTC plus web socket. Plus Angular Video Call App. Then now Uh, let's get rid of this error here. We need to install uh, the missing uh, components. Here we are going to add additional modules. Here that we'll use in our applications. We need to use the mat tool bar module and then we also need to use the mat button module and uh, we also need to use the We don't even need much for now. We have we need uh, the mat side bar side nav module here. So then we need to import them. We need to import them. This one is going here, and then Angular material slash toolbar. Same thing will go here. This one is button. We take it. Angular material button. And then side nav. Here, side nav. We save this one. And it's okay now. 
if we come now we don't see uh, so uh, here is that this one and then nothing is there we need to add some custom size styling and uh, we are going to take sidebar container site nav site nav container height is 100% then we here have our custom toolbar which is here and then we have the background color uh, that we use as green and then next the color font color is white here is that not in yet oh it was not saved so it is saved now we refresh nothing uh, we have uh, this toolbar web RTC this and then we need to add our panel so If we go inside here, this one is called a panel, and then we come here. We make use of that, it's already there. And this is quick here, we need to import it. And uh, a panel is not non elements. So we come here, we save it. So uh, nothing is shown. Sure what is the problem now and we have issues here okay let's close everything we close this one and then we close that Then we go here to the folder. We remove this, we delete this cache, and then bring a new this open. Tutorial here. We just open it. NG build <laughs> uh, 
ngcf okay so the problem was just uh, an error that we didn't see in the in the console so everything is up here and and running everything is there so the next thing that we have to do now is to come to now we need to go to our panel now and do some works so in order to make this design here we make use of new components we need to have um, a grid list a grid and then put one uh, video in the left one in the right and the bottom here we add the buttons so in order to achieve that we go to we need to make this one here is our mat grid list and we we'll need two columns and height here will be row height and row height will be two by one two column one row and then we'll also have uh, uh, we don't have suggestions so I we don't have suggestions and uh, let's oh see I see so the same thing that we did here the same components that uh, we used we need to come here right, and make use of import our mat uh, grid this module here we need to bring that right we need to bring that inside our panels so then yeah we can have auto solutions now gota now is 20 pixel and then uh, we will need uh, the titles so for each column we need to uh, add a title so we have here mat grid title and then in the title now we need to have in each column now we need to also have A div and then the div here we are going to make use of a class called video container and then inside this div now we also need to make you see the local stuff so that one we call here local and it is called uh, it's a class we need to style it with a class called uh, video descriptions video descriptions then 
the same thing we copy it we put here and this one we call it a remote right we have it remote so we already have something like this which is good and then at the bottom now we need to create a new div and then put all our containers inside all our buttons inside we are going to call this uh, button container and then here we have one button with the mat first we have this start local camera for starting the local camera and then we have mat raised button color here we assign primary same thing that we have here we uh, replicate the same thing we have four buttons here start uh, first we start the call then start the camera then we launch a call and then here we stop we pause the call here so here is stop and then last is hang up stop everything so right now we already have stuff like this one which is good and then we need to uh, put the plus place older for our video we call video and then we add a reference we can call it local video to play true and then uh, we can mute the video by default now because of noises but when applications is running then you are going to yeah mute this video to avoid uh, audio interference for now we focus on the video and uh, yeah that is it we take this one here and and put the same thing down <coughs> so here is that here is what we have now and uh, yeah here is remote video now we need our CSS uh, just for the timing now I'm not uh, going to
put uh, all these stuffs. I'm not going to, I'm just going to make it at this CSS here. This is out of the topic for this video, but for the styling here, yeah, you can see yeah, here is the mat grid. And uh, let's go. Okay, here is our styling here. We just apply it and then, yeah, we can go to that step by step. Here is the styling of the mat grid list. Here is the title. Here is the video container. Here is uh, the video. Here is the descriptions. Here is the positionings of the description on the video. And then here we put, uh, we try to centralize the buttons. So with that done, this is what we have, right? So <clears throat> uh, scroll it in case you are typing, feel free to pause the video and and type uh, and type them then yeah so when that one is done if we click on start now and go to our console we can see that nothing is happening this is because we have not yet connected the button to the logics so in order to do that now In order to do that, uh, let's go back uh, to our panel components. And then we are going to make use of one interface here after view init. So after Implement, oh sorry, implement after view in it. So after we open our page, after we open our page, this is life's part of the life cycle after in it, then now we are going to implement this one. start here take this one out and then uh, so before continuing um, we are going to link our components to the view so we are going to link our video component area components to the back end view. So here view child view shall here is going to take the reference to our area here. Here is the reference to our local video. So we take this one and we put it here. And then we have the variable local video. We don't want it, we want it to be not not null, undefined. So element reference. So by this one, we get uh, the reference to my local video now inside our component. So we are accessing this component here so that we are able to add soft to it. So this is how we get uh, the reference to that. And then, now once that one is done, so and uh, we need to declare our stream. 
local stream media stream and then it can be uh, where is uh, that uh, where is the keyboard or oh, on define yeah uh, on define here is our local stream we'll have two stream the local one and the remote one but for now we need the local one we'll focus in our on our local video then the next thing that we have to do now is after view init here is to request to as you see here we need to get access to our local media so that we can pull uh, the camera the, the microphones and other stuff that we want but for now we need to pull the my the camera and the microphone so this uh, request this is a user defined functions so it can be anything that we want we request media devices this can be anything and then now we declare that method below we are going to make it private and then now after that one is done We need uh, to we need to pull up those media now, and we use our local stream, assign it to our local stream. So here await, and then because here we are going to make use of our then this asynchronous. Uh, paradigm so we get the navigator media devices get user media and then now so here we have to specify uh, the media constraint what do we really need to have here and as you can see here here is the definitions, here is uh, the documentations here and then we need to define this uh, constraint uh, so camera, microphones and stuffs should be here and asynchronous functions and then here so this is how it is defined here and uh, following both audio without any specific requirements and then now for us here we we'll need to have some requirements for our video audio yeah so let's take this one here we take that and uh, we can put it here directly but uh, i would prefer that um, i wouldn't prefer this one so to make it a bit cleaner here let's declare some constraints we call it media constraints on top here and then we assign that to it so it is here the width is too big so I will add 720 and here 
hold up four five zero. Okay, then uh, our configurations is defined, and then we can come now and simply add that to it. And then because of this uh, asynchronous functions here, we need to add a sync. And then we say asynchronous need to yeah add the promise. So here promise. For now, we don't expect much. It is void. Here is how we pull our local video. Here is how we pull our local video here. So we have it here now. We have that. But still now, nothing yet uh, interesting. So we also need now to define two functions. The one that we use to start our video and then the one that we use to pause our video or stop it. Then, and then here I will come now and define one function here, start local <coughs> video, All right, return here will be void. Oh, sorry. Then, this local stream get tracks and then for each for each tracks. <coughs> so tracks here are something that we have yet, uh, you also have tracks here, we define this one later, but just not like once, uh, it's just like we have our peer connections, once we have uh, our connections, then we need to put the track. It is in, on this track like, okay, like the railway track, that stuff can pass on through on that one. So here will allow us to make use of audio and video. Yeah, send them and receive them. Yeah, during a pair connection. So that's why we need uh, that tracks here. So these tracks here, we need to we access the audio and video through the tracks, which are available on the stream. So. I hope that one is enough. Then for each we can call it track element, we call it track and then track. Oh no, 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 we open back for each. Say functions for each here and for each track. Lambda expressions, so we can have our track here, we enable it and set it to true. Then once that one is done, then we go to our local video. Local video native element SRC. This is native, this local video. Then 
src object this is local stream here is start here here is how we start our video and then uh, if you have that here let's go and try a bit and see what is happening with our code and we go to the view in the start here you make use of click and then inside here we add it here and then go back to that oh you can see here congrats we already have our video here it's already come and then now we need a way to stop it yeah but in your case now because i already had this one launch in your case it might happen that uh, Uh, we may have, uh, I will just to delete my cache a bit. So I had to delete that, so it's there. But it might request you to allow, to give the permission the first time that you, you you run this one so you might be prompted to accept so you will have to accept it right you will have to accept that and then it's interesting now not let's try to see how we can stop our video we go back to that and then here we are going to implement pause i will see Post local video void thus and then inside um, post here. Uh, we are going to same thing as we did before we need to access uh, we need to do the same thing that we did here we can just copy here and then assign it here but here instead of enabling we need to set this one to false we set this one to false and here we set this one to undefined and then we bind this one to our button to our button and then we come here we refresh this we start this oh what have I done? Ah, oh, call. No, sorry. It shouldn't be here. It should be here instead. Click. Stop. Video call. Pause here. So, what we have to do is start it and then pump stopped. So here is how uh, we have implemented this one. So we start it. In the beginning, we start our video and then we stop it. We start our video and then we stop it. We can also click start with another component here here is another uh, client here right we start our video we 
Okay, something, yeah, with a Oh, okay. Let's. I see. Okay, we cannot uh, access two client in the same device at the same time. Is what I see here. Okay, hmm. it's working. So what happened? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Okay, it's working, and then we have two clients here. Then we stop it. And we also stop here. So this is what I try to really have achieve in this uh, video here. I hope that it has been useful to you. And then in the next part, we are going to uh, pursue here with implementations of uh, uh, at the stone server, the signaling server, and then try to, yeah try to add this call functionalities that some will use to launch the video and call the remote client and do the full call video with. So stay tuned. So much have been done now. Stay tuned for the next video. Bye.